Hi Flosstube and Instagram friends, my name is Kim and this is Flosstube number 21. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'm kgoldman63 on Instagram. So welcome or welcome back. I have a fair bit to share with you again today. I have two finishes, progress on three or four of my whips, an exciting new start to talk about, lots of good stitchy chit chat. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, let me get right into it with my very first finish. This is Plum Street Samplers, My Peaceful Home. And I stitched this along with my friend Shelly, Key X Stitch, hi Shelly. And hopefully Natalie from Home Sweet Home Handmade, hi Natalie, is gonna get a start on this soon as well. So as you can see, it's a drum. I've never made a drum. So I took a um, glass candle container from uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, and I burned out the candle and cleaned it really well. And uh, it's not actually even sewn together yet. Um, but let me go ahead and show this to you up front. We stitched this fairly quickly. Um, pink house, right? Love that pink house. And the peacock, Susan, Stanley, <laughs> a stitch in time. Uh, she's got a thing for peacocks lately. So all the charts with peacocks she keeps noticing. And uh, the little deer and the sheep. Very, very sweet. Um, I can put, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. If I'll put just something inside of it, if I'm going to get maybe a lid and put a, um, like a knob on the top of it, maybe just look like that. I, options. But, uh, I have, like I said, I've never attempted a drum yet. So that's kind of my version of drums is just wrapping things around circular items and, uh, calling them good. Okay. So that was my first finish. And then I also finished Mary Hunter. 1844 by GGR, and this is a sal that I stitched along with my friend Amy from uh, Mrs. Flossie. Hi, Amy, and Carol, Rosebud Stitcher. Hi, Carol, and I stitched this on 40 count vintage cedar plank, which is the fabric that Amy chose, and I absolutely followed suit. It's gorgeous fabric. Hold on, it's popped out. Now, this is just, Mary is just loosely placed in this thrift store thrift store frame because she gave me quite a challenge um, trying to find a frame that I liked with the fabric. And I only just found this today. And this is this is a frame that you see at thrift stores a lot. It's this, it's blue with this gold um, edging. And I see them in all sizes and, and often, like I said, this color very often, but the blue wasn't working for me. So I just took some black acrylic paint and lightly went over the blue. And I, I think I'm really happy with this now. It's a good size. I think this is probably an eight by eight opening. She's a little bit different um, height and width, but not noticeably. So I think I'll go ahead and stretch her a little bit better and pin her and, and I'm really, really happy with how this came out. So yeah, that's Mary Hunter. And I believe, I don't think I changed anything on this. I, I, I'm pretty sure I just used all the called for and uh, and we're really, really excited to have her finished. So, um, also I was able to do, I went to a couple of thrift stores and I was able to do some uh, framing of pieces that I have shared uh, with you as past finishes. This is Viola Martini. It's also another GGR. And um, I found a thrift store frame that I think works perfectly. So I'm really excited to have her in a frame. This again, um, I think I've just talked about all the colors I've used. Most of them were called for. Sometimes I moved some colors around, um, but for the most part, uh, I don't think I, I don't, I can't remember if I changed any of the colors or like I said, maybe just moved them around. This is um, Lila's House, Miss Lila's House by Carriage House Samplings. And she got a frame. This frame was actually on a prior piece. And when I was thrifting, I found a frame I liked better on the other piece. And I'll try to swivel my, if I remember, maybe I'll try to swivel over there and, and show you. And so this was uh, one that I thought, oh, I wonder if that'll work. Cause I, I couldn't find a frame for her. She hadn't been framed because I didn't know if I was gonna have to try to find something in odd size again. But I put her in here and I think she looks really good. So uh, yeah, here's another one. Uh, I've been moving everything around in my craft room again. I shared this on Instagram and uh, 
just kind of, I've had a lot of things that I finished. And so trying to make room for them on the walls. And um, I had a wall over here that I had wanted to put things up. And so as soon as I finish getting all of my uh, ducks in a row and everything's put away, I will like stand in the room and just do a spin and, and share all the walls with you. And I know that if you have any questions about anything you see, um, obviously just ask and, and I'll try to let you know what it is. Oh, and Molly, before I forget, Swan Garden or no? Yes. <laughs> It's a flamingo because it's pink, but it's Swan Garden by Kathy Barrick. And uh, Molly West, Sensible Stitcher. Hi, Molly. She had talked about um, she wants to start this at some point. And uh, I said, oh, I stitched that. I stitched that. Uh, and then here's the other one that everybody, uh, the new one now is out by um, Needlework Press. This is in all things be exceedingly, be exceedingly diligent. And I stitched that one. I don't have the new chart um, as of yet. I don't know. I love it. Uh, I don't know that I'll be doing it right away it's it, there's so many other things on my list but i do love that one uh, a couple more that i found frames for before we move on to my whips this is by heartstring samplery it's something with the word chariots in the name of the chart but i don't remember which one um i stitched this a while ago uh, a couple few years ago now and it just never had a frame and this was one that i had picked up as a possibility for mary and um i just I, I think it looked really good with this one. So this now has a, a frame that I am pleased with. And let's see, there's probably some others I'll share in the future. This was the, the last one I think I can get to today. Hopefully I don't make everything go topsy. Okay, Ooh. Uh, this is Mercy Mercy by Lottie Daw. And again, this has been in a lot of different frames, but I was just never that thrilled. Um, but I put it, this is just a plastic, again, it had a decor piece in here and I spent all the time it took, it was a lot of time I've spent the last couple of days taking things out of frames, um, removing staples and whatever. And I was so happy to see, uh, Celeste Creates. Hi, Celeste. She recently, um, uh, just on her floss tube just today, she talked about how she finished Anna Omen. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. And she stitched it super fast. <laughs> And she put it in a, uh, she has a, a nice antique mall by her. And she said she finds great frames all the time. And um, so I was excited to see that, that she had a, a perfect frame for Anna. I'm going to set this here because I'm not sure I can get that back. Uh, and probably not very um, gracefully. Uh, let's see. I think that's everything I can see around me that I can share with you about reframing today. Maybe we'll, we'll do some more later. So let's go ahead and go on to my first uh, whip, my work in progress, and it's going to be the loose feathers. So I have all three of them, switching all three of them together. And um, I know that there has been uh, um, some interest in how I've done the lettering. Let me share that with you. This is, now again, this is my friend Misty. Hi Misty, Luminous Fiber Arts. This is her uh, genius idea to switch out the alphabet for uh, to everything there is a season. Uh, the beginning of Ecclesiastes, and I I hope I can share. I'm, I'm going to try because several of you were interested, so I'm going to try to show you and explain quickly what I did with the lettering uh, and see if it helps. So I started the bottom of the T, which lines up with the bud of that, and it goes over about three more at the top of the T, right? And then I tried to put, there's one space, then there's six spaces between the edge of this and the edge of the stitch, you know, um, the farthest stitching on each side. And then obviously one, 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 one. It got a little bit tricky when I got to the Y. So uh, I believe it looks like there's probably one space between the edge of here and the edge of the Y, maybe two spaces there. And then obviously I just kept trying to do one. Um, right here, there are two spaces between the, the body of the N there and the edge of the G. Then I did six spaces from the outside stitch, which I think is this one right here, to the top of that right there. And then one, one, one. Now the mistake I made is I missed two stitches on the edge of this E. There's supposed to be two stitches and I just I just missed it. I wasn't gonna pull it out, it's a bit of an oopsie, but just I'm wanting to let you know that if you do remember the two stitches and you get over to the edge here, I believe this lines up probably maybe two stitches past instead of the three that are on this side. I can't be 100% sure because I haven't stitched the rest of everything over here. But it looks pretty good placement wise. I hope that was helpful. All I did was cut all of the letters, you know, I made working copy, cut all the letters out, pasted them all back together and kind of did the math as best I could. Uh, and that's how I chose how to make it say that. 
Um, the, the colors in here, uh, I'm using some substitutions. This is light khaki. Again, that was Misty's color choice. And uh, then I use the DMC for the outside of the flower. Uh, I stitched right over the middle center. There's supposed to be some little uh, center portions in here and I'll just stitch them on, on top. Uh, I sit, switched out this color for oak. I believe this is probably oak as well, but I can't be 100% sure. I'll, I'll have to try to remember better to tell you next time. Remember I said I had missed some of the dry time, so I just, this is supposed to be dry time down here. So I stitched end dive, not realizing the symbol had changed. So I just added the dry time up here. And I think, oh, this is 40 count um, old stationery by Seraphim Fabrics. And I'm stitching it, so 40 count one over two. So I'm loving that. Uh, let's see, what did I do next? I stitched a pink house, another pink house. Next, and this is again, Misty, Luminous Fiber Arts, Midnight Song, Midsummer Song, sorry. And I wanted, I was dying to get to this pink house. So that's what I did. I stitched a little bit, I finished the tree, the Christmas tree, and uh, stitched the pink house and a little bit of the, the leaf over here on this side. And I think that came out wonderfully. I'm using all of Misty's, uh, the called for colors. There's mostly over dyes. There are a few uh, DMC colors in there as well. And this is 36 count Beach Brew, which I believe is R&R. &R. And so one over two. Um, I don't use two on 36. I still just use the one. And I'm loving stitching that as well. Okay, so then this next one yeah, and I'm, I hope I'm telling you all of the names of the cells. I think I forgot. Do you mind if I go back real quick? Let me do that really quickly. So this is uh, Mary Hunter SAL. So if you want to stitch it and post it to Instagram, that's the hashtag that we're using. Or you can just follow along and look at our progress. And Shelly and I stitched this um, and did the My Peaceful Home with Friends SAL. And uh, hopefully Natalie's going to start that soon. Okay, I think that's everything. This next cell is, uh, so Victoria's Garden SAL, stitching this with, uh, well, started it with uh, Tanya, the sampler girl, hi Tanya, and Laura from Brenda and the Serial Starter, hi Laura, and um, Melissa, I'm, I'm so sorry, I have forgotten to look up your floss tube channel. Um, I'll try to link in the bottom. Um, stitch from, stitch the stash. I'm so sorry, Melissa. Uh, but anyway, she started this as well. So you'll know, I'm going to show this one more time because you'll notice I didn't do these two trees and my border is a little bit different. Uh, I did post on Instagram. I was hoping I was going to be able to finish this. And I posted on Instagram and said, if I don't do the border, <laughs> I'm thinking about not doing the border. And several of you said, I really think you need the border. Barbara, Raspberry Stitcher. Hi, Barbara. I'm stitching the border, Barbara. Uh, and I agree, it needed it. It just didn't look finished. And I just, you know, I just don't like stitching borders. So I was trying to avoid it. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, if you'll notice, these are very uh, smooshed and I didn't, I didn't recognize that she stitched a lot of these without this extra little stem piece here. And there's a couple here. And I got, I had got, I was stitching along and I gotten over to, I believe this side and recognize, oh, wait a minute, what, did I miss the stem? No, she just randomly stitched with or without the stem. And once I realized I wasn't gonna pull it out, so I just kept and continued on. I added the stem, the extra stitch here and here and over here, I'll do it here. And then I just decided to make them smushy because I, I just, it was easier to stitch that way. And um, so I just decided to make them uniform. Now, the question I'll have is whether I go back, I'm trying to see if I can get away with just stitching the bottom flowers. And if not, if I feel that it needs them, I'll go in and put the top flowers in after. But um, I've changed a lot of, I've used the called for over dyed. I've just used them in a lot of different places. I changed a lot of the colors in this flower here. Um, I added this um, inside color here to this flower because it was, it, I think it was dirt road or pebble beach and I didn't want a brown flower. I kind of adjusted my bush thing here. It was a little wonky and I was gonna stitch it the same as this, but I just made it wonky in a different way by accident. Um, I think I might add a bird, one of these birds. I might put a little bird in here. I thought about maybe putting my initial, but I was afraid that would be like the only thing I saw when I looked at it. So, um, gosh, this is 40 Count Attic Lace by Lakeside Linens, but it's just a white. It's not modeled or over dyed that I can tell. 
So I'm close to a finish on Victoria. This, this border didn't actually go that terribly. So uh, if I pull her out again here soon, um, I'm hoping to have a finish on her next time. Okay, so next is the Tudor B SAL, which uh, my friend Amanda, hi Amanda, Alba Stitcher, and I, um, we're gonna stitch together and a lot of you decided to join us, yay. Uh, many, many floss tubers are joining. I'm, I'd be afraid I'd leave somebody out if I started mentioning. Let me do mention the one though that uh, is finished. Um, I don't know that Colleen stitched it with us as part of the sale. I think she was already stitching it, but that's Lockabee, Colleen is Lockabee stitches. And again, I will try to do links, um, but she has a finish that she framed. It's fabulous. I, I, it's just a fabulous finish and it looks beautiful in the frame um, that she made or altered. I think she added an, just go check out Colleen because it's a really beautiful finish and I'd love for you to go see it. And somebody stitched it uh, on Instagram. I saw they stitched it in purple and people are doing all kinds of really wonderful things. Um, so this is on 36 count uh, up in the attic by Fox and Rabbit. And I am using, let's see if I can pull this. I am using a variety of different um, flosses. I was going to just use the DMC conversion, which I think is beautiful and probably would have made it a lot easier had I just done that. But I started changing a few things to some of the silks I have and some overdyes for various reasons. I probably, I didn't have some of the DMC and so that led to me looking for a substitute and that led to another um, substitute. So uh, this is part of my camp piece for this month, the cross stitch camp. Um, and so hopefully I'm going to have to finish this soon if I want to get, if I want to get it done by the end of July, uh, maybe the next time I pull it out, but I got distracted and let me share with you my fabulous and wonderful distraction was this beautiful new start, Christina. Hi, Christina. Whilst Iris Naps came out with this gorgeous reproduction sampler and it's, I mean, you know, those pink reds, um, the house. It doesn't have a terrible border, which I think Trisha, hi Trisha, I think you commented on that. It's like, that's right up your alley, Kim. Not a very big border and lots of beautiful colors. Yes, yes it is. So she put this, uh, the video went up and I saw it first thing in the morning and I waited for it to be done for my husband to get up and finish his coffee, turn on his computer. And I'm like, sweetie, you need to download this for me. <laughs> and I basically, it calls for 36 count Brenda's brew. Uh, I had 40 count Brenda's Brew by r, &R so I think that that was absolutely a, a must. Um, there are going to be a lot of hanging threads on this, and that's just because that's the way I stitch. I was mid-stitch. I've only been able to get a couple of days. I started the very next day, and I uh, I kind of nudged my friend Shelly. <laughs> All I did was show her the chart. I was like, look at this chart, and you know, she was on board. So we're stitching this together as well, and I'm sure uh, a great number of you have already started or will be because... Uh, I just, I love everything about this chart. Um, so I got a bit of a start. Look at that, it's a purple door, right, Barbara? It's a purple door. Um, it's fun, it's, uh, I, it's the colors. That's what, it's just, it's the colors. That's my favorite thing. So that was my distraction and uh, I'm sure you can appreciate why that had to happen. Okay, let me set everything aside and see what else I had to, talk about today. Um, I brought out a couple of older um, things that I have started, I've not shared with you before, and they're not things I'm actively stitching on, but I've never showed them. So I thought I would do that uh, quickly and just for fun. So this is my, uh, and I actually may have showed this one before. Uh, this is Spring Quakers. And what I didn't, what I decided that it's not pink. I thought it was pink. I think may, maybe the model I saw at the store when I was in Canada, I bought it at the Gita's in Canada. And perhaps the model on the wall was in pink. Um, maybe I just saw pink, I don't know. But it's a lot of different colors. It's the Baldani, it's one strand, a lot of color changes. And I think for me mostly, it's just that it's not pink. And it's a lot of work, it's a lot of stitching. It's a big piece. Um, so I'm gonna just put another motif, kind of try to square it up. And, and I, I don't think I'm going to, I, I've had it sitting like this now for a really long time. So that kind of tells me that I, I'm probably not going to um, finish it. And this is really nice linen. This is like vintage, no vintage, uh, 
uh, exemplar, vintage light exemplar by Lakeside Linen. So this is a, it's a big piece and I definitely will be using that for something else. So I just was waiting because I didn't need it. And I thought, oh, it'd be a shame if I, if I gave up and then I decided somewhere down the line, maybe I'll still stitch it, but I don't know that I will. Um, now I have showed the, I've stitched the first four of these, which are the, you know, the main characters um, from the Wizard of Oz, Dorothy, the Lion, the Tin Man, and the scarecrow. <laughs> yeah, all, it's on the wall up there. So I was looking. I stitched the first four and framed them all together. And now I'm going to stitch the second four. And um, I think after that, I, I'm going to call it good because this is something I, when I first got back into stitching, this is by Brooks Books. Uh, when I first got back into stitching, I just did all the call for. And this is on 28 count Monaco. I don't like two strands. I don't like Monaco. It's very thick. I know a lot of you love it for that very reason. It's kind of a little bit more tedious for me to, to stitch on, so I don't enjoy it. But I've gone this far, and I, so I'm gonna stitch the wizard um, as the fourth one, which I couldn't find. For some reason, I can't find the two that I had left on here to stitch, so I pulled them and put them somewhere. But I did find the the other, the other four other uh, little munchkins, and they're adorable. So if I stitch these, it's quite a bit of stitching on these, actually. If I stitch these, and it's crying and such, uh, maybe I'll just make some pillows um, or some seasonal little displays. Isn't she cute? Pink, right? So we'll see. Uh, again, these are just things I have. I, I just am not actively working on. Not that I wouldn't like to be, but I'm just, uh, I'm just not at this point. And then this last one, I have a thought of how I'm going to alter this and, and make it more doable. Um, Prairie, um, Prairie Life Sampler by Heartstring Samplery. And I love this chart. I mean, I was a, a huge Laura Ingalls uh, fan, the um, Little House on the Prairie, read the books over and over and over, never missed the, the, the television show when it was on. But you can tell, you already know, right, what I'm going to say. I don't want to stitch that border. So I think I'm going to shorten it. I'll show you. I've actually almost finished where I'm going to stitch to. So I have to stitch the girls, um, the uh, Laura, Mary, and Carrie. Um, it's some one over one, so it's a little bit more complicated. And then that portion will be almost done. It looks like there's probably a little bit more here with the trees. Um, there's probably a clothesline there. But what I'm thinking I'm going to do is I might not even stitch the words because if I just don't stitch the words and I just stitch that portion in the middle and I wrap it around a jar and make it a drum, I think that'll be a really good representative of this stitch for me and a wonderful uh, childhood memory. So I do I do want to finish that and 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 make those changes. Um, okay, so that was all of that. I have a couple of new charts to share. I got my, you've heard me talking about this quite a bit, my Strawberry Harvest um, by Cottage Garden Samplings. And um, Shelly and I are gonna stitch this as well, hopefully soon. And then Brenda, hi Brenda, from Brenda and the Serial Starter, showed this as a finish and I was, oh my, I immediately went and tried to track it down. I got it from Stitches and Things in Fenton, Michigan. I love this little bird. So I'm excited to stitch that. And let's see what else. Um, oh, and then I'll have, I, I didn't pull the chart yet. I'm going to have to get prepared because uh, Melanie, hi Melanie, Melanie Smith, Yarns and Threads, and I are going to start the um, Francis Pool uh, on August 15th. And Melanie is ready. She's got everything all kitted up. I have to do that. I have to pick fabric and make sure I have the flosses. So that's something I need to get on. And then another one, several planned projects from this book. And this was uh, Leslie. Hi, Leslie, Fat Cat Flossing. She showed this recently. Have you seen, at her last video, she showed a lot of really wonderful finishes. And this one is, it's spectacular. I, it, oh, so that of course made us want to stitch it. Um, the other one that I've been wanting to stitch, and it's so nice when you have someone who wants to stitch along with you on the same project, because I find that very um, motivating. But this is another one that um, we would like to stitch. Um, and this is the one I have stitched from this. And I, I wanted to make sure to share it because it's this one right up here. Uh, several of you have asked about it whenever you see it on the videos, but I didn't put the buttons. I changed it to say bless instead of button box. I added a heart. Um, I think I, I changed a, a couple of the colors, maybe brought in some more of the pinks, but uh, cause I didn't make the buttons. I, don't, I didn't make these flowers this color either. And I just made them little flower buds. Um, but I love that from that book. 
So let me see. I think there's there's one more thing I want to share with you, and then maybe I'll try to swivel you just a little bit so, so you can see what I've accomplished so far. But I was watching uh, Rainy Day Reads. Hi, Rainy. And that's R-A-I-N-E-Y. Uh, she's been a booktuber for a long time. I, don't, I haven't watched her as a booktuber, but I stumbled across her. I, somebody probably mentioned her, and I went over there and checked out her channel. And um, she's now adding cross-stitch. So I've been watching her cross-stitching. Well, the other day she came up and she was talking about, um, she does Jane Austen July. I am a big Jane Austen fan. She was talking about this book, which talks about Mary Bennett from Pride and Prejudice. And she was saying she loved it so far. She hadn't finished it, but she was really loving it. And even, even said that it might be one of her favorite books of the year. So I popped over and pulled it up on Google and I was able to read like the first three chapters for free. And I will tell you that by the second sentence, I was hooked. And so by the end of the three chapters, I said, okay, yes. I, I, Cause you know, it's kind of a big commitment to, um, to buy a hardbound book. It's a bit pricey. And uh, so I went on Amazon and you can imagine this happened in the middle of the night, right? Like you see that. <laughs> I was watching her in the middle of the night and did this, but I'm, I'm about seven chapters in and I'm loving it. So, um, I just read a little bit before I go to bed, uh, or if I get up in the morning or something. So I'm not in any hurry. Um, and I'm, it's about, again, it's about Mary Bennett and I'm really, really loving it so far. So, uh, that's a recommendation. Um, let me look around and make sure I'm not forgetting anything because I feel like I'm forgetting something. I did have, okay, so one more thing. I actually didn't ask if I could share, but I'm, so I won't mention, but I, I got a really unexpected um, gift in the mail today. And I, this part, this one I knew was coming, but isn't that, I mean, look at that little, the little petite point stitching on, it's um like a little compact case. So it unzips and it has the compact. And so, so, so sweet, right? But in addition to the compact, I got, oh, something was on top of that I got this was and I'm gonna cry so I'm not talking about it a lot but this was stitched for me and sent for me and you know you guys all know how it feels to get something somebody stitched for you and uh, so you know thank you thank you there were a few other goodies there was uh, some sulky I've never tried so I got some sulky I'm excited to think and of course you know the reds and pinks um, it, it was a lovely surprise um, thank you. Uh, let's see. So I think, let me do another real quick check because I want to make sure I didn't forget anything. I've talked about all of yes and yes, and I think we're good. So let me do uh, a quick pan without hoping everything doesn't go. Just, I'm going to try to, I think I told you, I'm going to try to do a spin of the room and show you more. So this won't be, um, this won't be everything, but, um, in it. It kind of, let's see if I can do this. It goes up to the ceiling. And I have, let's see, second shelf, second shelf. Okay, then let me set you back down and spin you the other way. Of course, I don't want my iPad to go crashing, so I'm being very careful. And then I got some stuff on this wall. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to show you too much of that. There we go, there we go. Let's see. And it goes up to the ceiling. <laughs> It'll probably be better for me just to wait until I can do the room uh, as a whole. But there's just a little bit of what I've gotten accomplished the last couple of days. Sorry, let me sit you up again. Okay, I hope that wasn't too much jiggling. Okay, so um, one more thing before you go, if you're not gonna stay for the scripture, um, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone. I had my last little, um, my stent removal from the uh, kidney stone and um, everything's, it wasn't pleasant, but it was, it, it's over. And I had posted on Instagram that I was going in to have that done and had asked for prayer and, and just for you to think of me. And you guys were amazing and I just, Big thank you, a big thank you. Um, I'm glad that's in the rearview mirror now, but I truly appreciate all of the prayers. Um, so thank you so much. Okay, so I believe that that is all the stitching that I have to share with you today. Uh, again, I hope to see you back for um, you know another floss, this type of a video in a couple of weeks, but as soon as I can get my room ready, I'll do a, a little uh, craft room tour. So maybe look for that. 
Um, I am, as always, going to share some scripture and I hope you'll stay. But if you're just here for the stitching, that's all the stitching. So thank you so much. Take care and I will see you soon. Okay, so for those of you who are still with me, I'm going to read Psalms 46, 1 through 11. And this is going to be the New King James Version. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. 